Alright guys, I'm back with my WWE Smackdown Live Review for the uh, 31st of the 1st 2017 guys. Um, this last episode of Smackdown, in my opinion, was, you know, it was just good. I couldn't say that it was really good, but it was a very solid show. Um, like Raw, it had its good points, but it had its bad points, so, um, but mostly good. So, yeah, I mean... They built up for the chamber, which was pretty good. They, you know, they're actually focusing on their chamber pay which is good. So SmackDown opens up with AJ, obviously demanding a one-on-one -on -one match for his t uh, for his title rematch against John Cena. Shane says, "No, you're not going to have it just yet," but he says that he's still in the chamber match. And then um, it's AJ versus Ambrose later on tonight in the main event. Uh, then we get uh, John Cena coming out with a promo saying that he's a 16-time world champion. He's going to WrestleMania. Blah 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 blah. blah. And then we have the White family come out and say that, well, don't, don't be, um, you know, don't be too confident um, already, John, because you've got the Elimination Chamber, and the uh, Elimination Chamber, one of us, are, are gonna, one of the White family, are going to walk out the next WWE Champion. Um, how does good promo? Um, and then you had a tag match, Luke Harper and John Cena versus the White family, versus Bray and Orton. Um, the, well, Luke Harper kind of has been brainwashed by Bray Wyatt so he cannot basically attack Bray Wyatt. He tries to but he can't he cannot. And then um basically John Cena eats the pen and, and the uh, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton go over it. Now the the plan I'm hearing from a lot of sources and a lot of people that I've heard while well, I talked to online that the plan is going into WrestleMania that they're gonna Bray Wyatt to Randy Orton at, for the title. The, and then Cena, there's probably going to do Cena versus Joe in an inter-promotional match because Joe's on Raw now, so Joe's on Raw, um, so the, so yeah, and I heard that Seth Rollins got injured as, as well um, on Raw, which kind of sucks for him, but I don't know, where would you go? Where, oh sorry about it guys, where would the WWE go? I mean, Triple H and Seth Rollins, that match again this year is up in the air because Seth has got injured again, um, I mean, they could that. I mean, Joe versus Cena. Yes, that could happen. I see that happening. Yes, as an interpromotional match, definitely that is gonna happen. But yeah, Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. I hope that happens. I hope we do not see Randy Orton versus John Cena. I don't want to see that. I mean, if Vincent Man and Kevin Dunn had any sense. Uh, business wise, they will have Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton. I mean, Bray Wyatt as WWE Champion would be fucking awesome. And if he does win at the Chamber, which is rumored to be true, I hope that he is not just a transitional champion. And I know you're saying, oh, well, why did Randy Orton win the Royal Rumble? But I don't want Randy Orton to win the title because we've seen Randy Orton uh, become WWE Champion or World Champion or whatever. Uh, he's been in those main event spots in the past, but Bray Wyatt's never had a WrestleMania moment. And he's always, he's never, he's been, you know, he's faced Undertaker and John Cena and he's had a conversation with The Rock last year or something. But he's never had that big WrestleMania uh, title match where he can say finally he's won a big WrestleMania match. And if he gets a clean win over Randy Orton, and that would really elevate, the, elevate him as an incredible champion. And um, yeah. I just hope that, you know, when they put the title on Bray Wyatt, he has a long, a long, re lengthy reign, and they actually making the vocal point of Friday Night Smackdown. And I think since the brand split, Bray Wyatt, in my opinion, is coming to, I'm kind of like back in the Bray Wyatt um, camp again, like, for a while now on this channel. I know I said this for a few months, like, before the draft, I said I was kind of getting bo uh, bored of, of Bray Wyatt, and he was kind of getting stale. But I don't know, since Randy Orton had joined the stable, it was kind of like, to me, He's kind of like reinvented Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt's reinvented Randy Orton in kind of a strange way and it kind of made me a more fan of Bray Wyatt but now because Bray Wyatt's getting more more TV time on SmackDown than he did on Raw before the, before the brand spot. Um, and then we get um, Carmel versus this jobber. Carmel goes over. Um, then we get um, Nikki. Then we get a tag team match. It was Naomi and uh, who, uh, who else was it? Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. The faces go over, and it was like Nikki James. Nikki, Nikki. Oh my God. Let's edit that again. It was like why did I say Nikki James? Naomi versus Alexa Bliss is going to happen for the Chamber for the women's title. That's what it looks like to me. 
Um, and then we had the main event, and it was um, AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose. It was a decent match. AJ Styles goes over, right guy won. Um, Miz was on commentary, and um, the Miz, um, score question finales, um, uh, Ambrose, and then um, Baron Corbin comes out, and this was awesome, man. Like, he does the ends of the days to um, the Miz and um, Dean Ambrose. Like, that was fucking awesome. Like, every week I see the WWE making Barry Corbin the focal point or the, the centerpiece of Friday Night Smackdown. He's either opening up the shows or he's closing Friday Night Smackdowns every other week. And it goes like every time that Baron Corbin's on our screens, it goes like to me, the WWE know what they're doing right with this guy. They're doing things right with this guy. He's not cutting promos like Roman Reigns or anybody else. Like, he isn't cutting promos like Roman Reigns, he isn't shoved down your throats like Roman Reigns is. He's just featured, kind of like a Braun Strowman is, he has his, like, little moments, and then he has a big moment in the main event scene. And two guys I see having big, um, you know, uh, big roles in 2017 in the WWE are one Braun Strowman, definitely Braun Strowman, he's like a fucking monster. And uh, Baron Corbin, like, I have never been a Baron Corbin fan, I wasn't in NXT, I just never felt him as a fan, but... I don't know, the last couple of weeks I kind of warmed up to the guy, and maybe I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of Baron Corbin, I guess, because, I don't know, he's impressed me. Like, when they call, it, when they call him up to the main roster of, um, at WrestleMania last year, I was like, like, why did you not call Joe before? I don't know why did not, they had, like, a lot of talented wrestlers, and then they call up Baron Corbin. I was never a fan of him on NXT, but since he's been on SmackDown, since he's actually kind of works on his character and where they're going with this guy, I am kind of being a, ba I am a Baron Corbin fan. Yes, I've said it. So that is my WWE SmackDown live review for the 31st of the uh, first 2017, guys. Uh, what do you guys think of this last episode of, last episode of SmackDown? Um, remember to uh, subscribe to the channel, um, like this video, and I'll check you later.